practice your scales and arpeggios. That's probably something a lot of you have heard throughout learning your instrument, yeah? Private teachers love to say it, band directors love to say it, I love to say it, and you know, there's a reason, right? It's because if you can learn your scales and arpeggios, then you apply those skills to everything, right? To your etudes, to your solos, um, to being a musician, right? Scales and arpeggios are the building blocks to just about everything in music. So if you can master these sets of skills, then you will have a lot more success in your your goals of you know making it in the world, right? Okay, so first, for those of you who don't know what scales and arpeggios are, I'll do a quick um, definition. Scales, it's where you play every note in the key in stepwise motion. Arpeggio means really you're skipping every other note, so you're playing the first, third, and fifth note in the key. So let's say in F, C major, you'd play the C, the E, and the G. That's a major arpeggio. Minor arpeggio. Diminished arpeggio. Ooh. Okay. So those two things, scales and arpeggios, are everywhere. Okay. So I want to start off by showing an example of how ubiquitous and common these are. All right. This is an etude from. The Rose Books. This is um, a Schubert song transcribed for clarinet. Really beautiful piece. Um, so I'm going to play through the beginning, and as I'm playing it, see if you can notice all the places where you see scales and arpeggios. Hint, they're everywhere. Okay? All right, here we go. one right arpeggios mean you skip every other note so if we were in the key of E minor which we are then an E minor arpeggio will be an E G and a B natural look at that okay so we start off in E minor got a whole bunch of just scalar motion E F sharp G G F sharp A here we go a lot of scalar motion Bing, bing, bang, a few jumps here and there. Back to our E minor arpeggio. Then let's skip down to measure nine. We got our dominant. We got our B major arpeggio. Another B major arpeggio, an octave up. Again, we have the B on top, D sharp on the bottom, F sharp in the middle. So we call it a first inversion triad or first inversion chord. They were all played together. <laughs> And then the next measure, measure 10, has a C major arpeggio. If you put that C on the bottom, it would sound like. And the next measure. You could either call this a D sharp diminished arpeggio or um, a B dominant with the B missing. Leading back into an E minor arpeggio. We have E minor, and then D, F sharp, A, D major, then we got C, G, and E, that's our C major arpeggio, B minor, then we got a little A minor, 
right? So this whole piece, oh, here we go. Here's a good one. G dominant, C major, F major, C major, A major, all this stuff, okay? So many arpeggios. So back to me. Hey, so if you can practice all your arpeggios and scales, then when you look at this music, you'll say, oh, I just see things that I know already. And you don't look at a piece and say, oh boy, that looks difficult. Right? It's just dense with a lot of things that are easy. All right, cool. So I'll finish up with a few exercises that I quite often use in my practice to you know, keep my chops up, work on my long tones, work on my arpeggios and my scales. First one, this is called the Bel Canto Warm Up Number One. This is a great combination of long tones. I mean, we have our half notes there. And we have arpeggios and we have some scales. This is a good exercise to start out with. Um, <clears throat> here we go. I'll play you the first line. <laughs> legato fingers on this. So let's look at the last two measures. We got an F half note and then we have a E minor 7 arpeggio and then we finish with our F major scale. Mm -hmm. continue that up an octave, up another octave, and in different keys. Next one, minor arpeggios. Equally as important as major, right? I personally like minor more than major, but hey, it's up to you. So I wrote this one out as a way to work on minor arpeggios and also think about harmony and chord changes. Okay, so this one starts off with a D minor arpeggio, D, F, and A, and then in measure three, it moves to a B major arpeggio, our sixth chord in the key of D minor, and then it moves down to a G minor arpeggio, and then finishes with an A dominant chord. So here's how it sounds. That same pattern of a 1, 6, 4, 5, 1 progression starts again in the key of G minor, and then A minor, C minor, and E minor. Okay, you can play this whatever speed you want, you can articulate it any way you want, right, but this is a nice smooth way to work on multiple different arpeggios, all while thinking about how they fit into a key. So it's, to me, I think it's more helpful doing this than to isolate each arpeggio and work on them, like so. Okay, you throw it all together and you're putting it in the context of music. Okay, it's more fun that way. All right, you can also work on your pentatonic scales, those are very important. Um, Bobby Stern wrote a lot of good ones. He's got about 10 pages of music of pentatonic scales in different formulas, right? Different order of notes, all helpful. And two more exercises that I have made up myself as a, to quickly run through all your scales and arpeggios, let's say before a concert, before an audition, you know, to start a practice session, after your long tones, right? Okay, the first one to work on your scale is you'll go starting on your low E, work your way up, and then continue chromatically through all your scales. So it sounds like this. Okay, you go E major up, F major down, F sharp major up, G major down, and you continue that pattern. So it's one up, one down, one up, one down, always moving chromatically up your scale. top, you 
go in reverse. Like that. Now, depending on the day, sometimes you'll feel fresh and you can go faster. Some days you can go slower, right? And um, <clears throat> it's a good way to gauge where you're at in terms of your technique. Um, do the same thing for your arpeggios, too. Yeah. So, again, this is the last step. Once you learn all your scales and arpeggios, then you combine them and have a really efficient way of working on them. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but don't skip that first step of learning them individually. Cool. And then, um, yeah. So I'm going to keep this short, so I'll stop there. I have put together a method book, which has all these exercises and about 120 pages more. Um, so if you'd like to get that method book, I have it on PDF. Just please email me at this address, vincentkumulia24 at gmail.com, and I can get that to you. Cool. Hopefully this helps you a little bit with um, having some different ways to work on your scales and arpeggios. Good luck in your practice, good luck during this quarantine, and you know, do your best to keep your chops fresh and stay inspired. All right.